live from the globe it's more music and uh we got a special guest for you guys tonight we're bringing in a band my name's tyson and uh you know what it's a little bit different afternoon drive today we have the debutantes live in the studio welcome everybody thank you guys so much for coming in yeah thanks, thanks for having us. us it's a lot of people in the studio we're having a good time this is going to be a nice little uh folk uh little half hour here as we prepare for your show tomorrow at the goshen brewing company uh seven o'clock to nine o'clock their free wednesday music series um, but let's let's start talking about that. Are you guys excited for the show tomorrow? It's a fun stage to play. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so it'll be our first time playing in Goshen as debutantes. Sean's uh, kicked around here a little bit, our fiddle player. But uh, as a band, it'll be our first time in Goshen, so we're stoked. Sean, you've played here as part of what other groups? Um, probably most recently the Goat's Beards with Adam Carter and Ellen and myself. But also back in the day, the Goldmine Pickers. Oh, okay, um, yeah. We did a lot of stuff around these parts. <laughs> nice. Well, you guys are coming from the Fort Wayne area. How does the music scene in Fort Wayne compare to Goshen? They're two cities of pretty different sizes. Yeah, I mean, Fort Wayne's a big city, uh, or at least it claims it, being the second biggest city <laughs> in Indiana. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, Goshen definitely has a little more of our vibe, you know, a little more of that college town vibe, which is always great to come to. Um, people definitely seem to appreciate music here. You know, we've noticed that and from shows we've come to and seen here and and everything like that but yeah it's, it's got a good vibe man goshen's a good town we're happy to be here something i want to talk about before we get into some of these songs is how this group came together there's a lot of you here um has this group had any turnover or has it stayed pretty consistent with the people who are in it uh since the band started yeah so it started out as as just john and myself uh john guitar player here and um, <clears throat> we kind of thought it would be this like rotating cast of people that we like to play with. And, um, but it actually found its permanent members pretty quick. Uh, we had a different bass player to start out with, but he actually quit the band and said, you guys should hire Colin Taylor. So that's exactly what we did. <laughs> and uh, Colin fits like a glove in this band, and he was definitely the man for the job. And um, yeah, everybody else just kind of fell right into place. That's kind of the, the name of this band is things tend to happen pretty organically and, and naturally. And um, man, we are just really enjoying the stars aligning right now and yeah. enjoying playing with each other. You guys describe yourselves as Indiana New Grass. Can you guys explain what that is? Yeah, sure. So, you got this one. So, you know, I mean, bluegrass is a very traditional music, right? New grass is not a new term. There's, I think, in the 70s, it's mm -hmm. pretty much been around for um, those that kind of went against the tradition or entered some new, more modern elements, you know, whether it's drums or effects, pedal boards, and st things like that. Stuff that would make a, uh, you know, your, your grandpa's bluegrass uh, just, you know, shock and awe. <laughs> Um, so I think Newgrass is a little more um, welcoming of, of modern takes, you know, and passing the sound on to a new generation. So I know we bring a lot of different styles to it, um, just from our personal experiences, whether it's rock or, you know, Irish music or indie music mm -hmm. or, you know, wh wherever it may be that we've played music before, I feel like we all kind of add that, bring this to the group. So it's, um, yeah. you know, it's a little more open-minded, a little more eclectic than traditional bluegrass, I'd say. Um, but we still love the, the traditional stuff, too, so we try to slip that in there when we can. Well, let's get into it. What's the first song we're going to hear from you guys today? Uh, we're going to do a song called Airplane. Airplane, debutantes, live on the globe. Take it away, guys. All right.
That's Airplane, the debutantes, live in the Globe Studios. That was amazing, guys. Well, very well done. They'll be playing at Goshen Brewing Company tomorrow night, 7 p.m. as part of their free Wednesday music series. You can check them out there. Uh, absolutely amazing, guys. Um, you guys going to play that song tomorrow? I think, uh, you know, I might have to show up if, if you are. I really like that. Yeah, man, we'll play it just for you. Oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, let's talk about uh, some of the other stuff you guys have done, some of your uh, online presence. One of the more creative things that I think we've seen from uh, a lot of bands in this area is the use of a 360 camera that you guys have used on some of your videos playing around one mic. I don't want to get too inside baseball with this here. We're kind of doing a similar setup in the Globe Studios. If you're listening on the radio, check this out on our YouTube page later on. You can see the video and our setup. Um, but it's a very, uh, you know, kind of traditional bluegrass thing where we're kind of clustered around a microphone and stuff like that. So um, I, I think what we want to talk about is how does it feel different when you're all playing around one or two, in this case, microphones in a semicircle versus, you know, maybe a more... Uh, a, a different setup where everyone's a little more separate. Yeah, it's, it's definitely like two different bands. A lot of time when we're all plugged in and we have effects pedals going and everything, but um, this feels like home, you know? We, we like to get together. Usually mm. Sean and Ellis cook a, a nice meal <laughs> and we kind of play in a circle or in a semi-circle like this, so this kind of feels like home for us and we love this organic approach too, just as much as being plugged in. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes, you know, it requires plugging in, I feel like, for, for maximum rocking out. Mm -hmm. But um, we kind of, we're at this crossroads now where we kind of choose it gig by gig, you know. Yeah. Um, this one, you know, for instance, tomorrow we'll be plugged in and we'll have effects and pedal boards and it opens up a whole new sonic territory for sure. But yeah. um, we were so happy we could come here and do, do this with the old mics because it just gives a way more intimate, you know, natural sound and... Uh, it definitely influences the the performance too. I know we all, you know, get pretty excited when the mics come out like this. So, um, <laughs> well, how can you not? I mean, they're yeah, absolutely they're so beautiful. Yeah, beautiful, and they sound so great. So uh, yeah, it's it's fun. You know, I mean, we're we're grateful that we have the options for both, and mm -hmm. we can kind of um, play the hand as as best played. You know. Yeah. Well, I also want to talk about the singing elements of your song. Seven members. Most of you guys sing. Who in the band uh, arranges the vocals for these tracks, and how do you guys figure all that stuff out? <laughs> it's a hard one. It's a hard one. Usually someone has a, a song idea, and we all come together, and it just uh, you know, flows naturally. We all kind of get in where we fit in, and we tweak it. Um, so we don't really have any written vocal arrangement music that we hand out to everybody. We just kind of yeah. sing like a little family, you know, and figure it out. <laughs> Pretty Pretty love it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, shoot, I'm stealing someone else's part. I better figure out where yeah. yeah. I just have to find out wherever the gap is yeah. and fill it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Luckily, we, it we've got some members with some really big ears that can um, find those notes. You know, I pretty much have one note that I hear, so when... When someone plays a song, I'll sing that part that I hear. Mm. And uh, Ellen and Colin have infinite uh, reach to any note that's needed. Um, so they're usually the last, you know, last layer on the cake, I'd say. But, nice. um, you know, it's one of those things sometimes that we let it just kind of evolve naturally. And mm. then when we actually get to the point where we're recording something, you know, like this or, or in the studio or something, then it's like, all right, let's get serious here. Who's singing what? Let's, you yeah. know, let's boil this thing down. and. And then after that, everything kind of has its parts until somebody goes on vacation and then someone else has to sing their part and then they got to get used to that. So nice. It's a constant evolution. Well, one more thing before we get to your second song. Scrolling through your socials, uh, discovered the Facebook group, The Deb Heads. Uh, it's, can we talk a little bit about that, what that is? It's uh, sitting around 500 people. It's grown to be a pretty impressive size. Yeah, definitely. Oh, the Deb Head Army is growing in, uh, <laughs> in energy and numbers. Um, no, we have some of the best friends and fans ever, and um, you know, following suit with the rest of this band, it's like we met the people you know through this band that we've wanted to meet, you know, and whether it's going and playing somebody's camp out, or you know, going and playing a party somewhere, or uh, you know, whatever whatever it may be, like during the pandemic when nothing was going on inside, we could still play outside, mm. so. That was nice. We could go play people's parties, and we met some really close friends and good friends through that. So, um, I think it's it's just something where if you kind of let things just naturally be, you know, it, it resonates with people, and yeah. um, you find your people. And 
and we're finding them. And if and if you're one of them out there listening to us, welcome to the Debhead Army. Well, yeah, let's join the group on Facebook. Let's get you guys a couple more. What's this next song you guys are gonna play? This next song is one of Sean's songs it's called "Dance All Night." Dance All Night. The Debutantes live on the globe. Take it away.
Rolling in the moonlight, rolling in the hay. Dance all night and all day long. My pretty baby ain't never coming home. Yes, my pretty baby ain't never coming The debutantes are live in the studio on 91.1 The Globe. They'll be uh, at Goshen Brewing Company tomorrow at 7 p.m. as part of their free Wednesday music series. Another fantastic tune, you guys. Um, if you're listening, just tuning in now, and you're like, oh, man, I missed the first one, well, don't worry. It'll be on our YouTube uh, page in just a matter of days. You can go and check it out then. Um, let's talk about a little bit of your catalog. You guys have three EPs out uh, now. The newest one uh, came out fairly recently. Um, if you guys want to talk a little bit about those, and uh, the newest one was part of your uh, Void Studio. Um, if you guys want to explain a little bit what that is as well, that'd be uh, that's an interesting. Another we talked about this a little bit in the second uh, sure. portion with the uh, one mic thing, but yes, your yeah. catalog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're spot on. So we had yeah the two EPs uh, that we uh, self released. Um, we recorded at uh, Studio One Ten in Carnegie, Pennsylvania. Um, with the drummer and producer uh, for a band called Fruition, um, who's a big, big uh, favorite band of ours, and uh, at least mine personally for sure. Um, and so we did two EPs with him, each five tracks, and then uh, just recently we went into the uh, into the Void studio. Our good friend Colin Boyd had us in for that um, 360 video session, mm -hmm. and we did uh, Airplane, and we also did. Um, this next number that we're going to play for you uh, as well. So both of those are, are on that um, Into the Void 360 session. You can go find the video for that or um, you can just listen to the audio on our band camp. But yeah, and we actually have uh, 11 tracks uh, in the chamber right now that are being mixed and mastered that uh, we hope to have out here um, by the end of this year for State. our first uh, full-length album. So that's some exciting stuff. Uh, to come. Stay tuned for that. I'm yeah. sure we'll, you, we'll be hearing more about that in the coming months. Um, let's talk about everyone's favorite topic, influences. Let's see, I want to hear a little bit about um, both the group's influences, where do you guys as a group draw from, and then also uh, some individual influences if there are ones that really stick out to you guys. Mm -hmm. Totally. John? Oh, yeah. I uh, See, I'm coming from a lot of like the jam band places. Uh, you know, I love Fish and uh, Grateful Dead and stuff like that. So a lot of that improvisational spirit comes into this music uh, through that, and um, uh, of course a lot of old bluegrass and stuff. So it kind of meets in the middle. <laughs> oh man, uh, so much everything from like Frank Sinatra to Billy Strings. <laughs> nice. And yeah, so much. So much. Michael oh, Easton. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Me personally, man, I come from um, definitely more of like a garage rock um, kind of background. I played drums my whole life. That was my main instrument. I didn't think I needed another. And I actually played in a band with John um, many moons ago, and uh, definitely like a punk spirit. But I always really loved, um, you know, like jazz, funk fusion, like Modesky, Martin and Wood, or uh, Meters, any of that really good jazzy funk stuff. Um, it, finds it, it finds its way in here for sure. Um, I mean, before I knew how to play mandolin, I pretty much just played it like a, like a drum, you yeah. know, and just kept time on it and let all these amazing uh, musicians I play with, you know, do the fancy stuff. Um, but man, I really fell in love with the instrument and started diving in deep and found the masters out there that had, had done so many things or, or continue to do so many things with it. And, you know, of course, found Chris Thiele. Yeah, and, of course. And uh, made me want to put the thing down and just give yeah. up. But, uh, no, but you know, it's the most demoralizing uh, music experience yeah, to watch yeah. him play. So of course, you know, Punch Brothers are, are a big influence. We like to think of ourselves, you know, distantly related. We call ourselves Punch Cousins. So um, definitely them, and uh, you know, all the exciting modern bluegrass, all the classic old bluegrass, and um, everything in between. I think there's so much just free game musically, and and we're we'll give it all a chance for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge melting pot of genres. It's kind of hard to pinpoint what, as a group, it is. But, man, it it all comes together and makes some 
some good sounding stuff. Mm-hmm. This guy has his it's biggest influence on his head yeah, right I now. Yeah, I do. NRBQ is a great band from the 60s, but I'm a British Invasion <laughs> type of guy. I like the Beatles and yeah. Herman's Hermits and stuff like that. So. Nice. I don't know. If, I don't know if that peaks out at all, but you know, maybe. it's in there somewhere. I don't know about you. Man, the people I play with on a daily basis are my biggest influences. I get to play with these <laughs> phenomenal musicians, and it's just kick ass. I um, grew up playing classical, so that was like because like, if you play cello, you mm-hmm. probably start classical. Yeah. Um, and then I've been just kind of diving into like old time bluegrass. Celtic fiddle, all kinds of stuff. I try to play it like a cross between the fiddlers I'm between and the bass player I'm between. And so I'm, I'm bouncing around between trying to play fiddle and bass and make a cello sound like either one. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah, you do it well. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, bluegrass and a lot of Irish music. Um, just, yeah, so I think a lot of my phrasing comes from probably some Irish stuff that I have been playing for a long time. Um, but like that, that, last song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that said, too, just like, I don't know, over the years, I've just tried to play with as many different kinds of bands as I possibly could, mm-hmm. you know, just anybody that was willing to have me. <laughs> so you pick up a lot of different stylistically, I think. Yeah. So. And I um, was raised on classical music, but then my dad was a rock and roll bassist and did jazz and actually my grandmother was a radio disc jockey and she had a jazz show that did old timey jazz on the late night from like 10 until 2 in the morning called Night Flight back in the day WB and I Uh, so yeah I I think all the influences kind of came together and formed my uh, collection in my head of all the genres I love and it spans from classical music all the way to electronic music and everything in between but I would say like my personal biggest influences would be between like Hilary Hahn classical violinist Mm. to Andrew Bird to uh, Mark O'Connor and Michael Cleveland nowadays that are just like woo make me want to just put this in my head but these guys are also a huge influence in my life and musical journey and it's been incredible being able to play with them. Absolutely. Let's get into our third and final song. What do you guys got for us? Yeah, so this is a song off of our, uh, our second EP. Uh, it's called So It Goes. Definitely a little more of the, the modern take uh, as opposed to some stuff we play. It's probably got the most kind of indie flavor, you know, as we can hear shining through on it. So, um, And actually, I, I think the song, like the intro of it, came to me thinking like, a, like an electronic music song, like a, an EDM tune or something like that. So... Again, anything's free game for for inspiration. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, it's called So Goes. Thank you. 
That's the debutantes live in the studio. Before we wrap up, uh, and we'll kick it back to more of the culturally progressive music, we'll take a moment uh, and remind everyone that you're playing at Goshen Brewing Company tomorrow from 7 to 9 as part of their free Wednesday music series on the lawn stage. It's going to be a gorgeous night, by the way. And uh, also, yeah, where can we expect you guys to be playing in the near future? Any, any dates to let the people know about? Man, we'll definitely come out tomorrow. It's going to be a good time at, at Goshen Brewing for sure. Um, yeah, and then other dates, I would just keep an eye on our uh, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere you, you go on there and scroll, and there should be dates on there. We got some stuff coming up towards the uh, end of August, and then fall is always a busy time for yeah. us. So. We'll be up in Michigan City. In North Shore. Yeah, we'll be in Michigan City towards the end of August. Um, we've got a few festivals here and there, so we'll be kind of bouncing all over the place. Nice. And lastly, where can people find your music? Uh, so we're on anywhere that's streaming music. Or you can go to uh, debutantes.bandcamp.com and everything we recorded is on there. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, coming in. I'm sure you guys swayed some more people into coming out to your show tomorrow night. Uh, we'll kick it back to the culturally progressive music. Take it away, Grant. This is 91.1 The Globe.